And we want to welcome all of you in the audience, uh, Karen and myself, plus our recent grads who are going to present their work. Uh, and this is, uh, as Margaret had mentioned, this is the fifth of the, first of the five workshops that w that's been created. And the first one being the online persona. How do you find not only the firm that you're working for um, and information from that firm, but how do you also present yourself? The second one we had discussed um, how to create that cover letter and resume and your work samples. The third one being that portfolio and the presence of all the work that's culminated uh, by being a student here. Uh, and the fourth one was that infamous interview session we had Mimi Sullivan here. Uh, Mimi pointed out uh, the important aspects of an interview, what to expect, and also what questions that you yourself can ask. And in the end, the fifth workshop, we are sharing with you the wealth of experience from your classmates. Uh, and then Karen's going to um, take care of the question and answer. Yes, and, and, and then I'll just only add a couple things, which is that all of the, um, the previous sessions that you just mentioned, they're all some version of them. Um, maybe not from this year, but from previous years, they have been recorded. So if you've missed any one of them, or if you want to revisit, um, they're available on the Academy website. The second is, um, because for the BRC, this is our third year, I believe, running this. So these guys are alums of this program. So I'm actually really personally curious to hear um, how attending the workshops either you know, made an impact or helped you along the way. So I'd be looking forward to that feedback. Just a separate, uh, another addition. <laughs> we, we have the thesis and portfolio books that were created by, from all of our guest presenters um, as a result of having learned from Mary Scott. Uh, and the final aspect is that they've That's also brought their there. business card. So this is a great networking opportunity. Um, so we're sharing all of that with everyone. So we'll present um, Dennis who's our first presenter, yeah. Dennis Levy. Hello, what's up guys? Um, I just graduated last <laughs> December, um, just got a job, woohoo! Um, <laughs> this is my third week, um, and I'm at Jennifer Tule Architects. Um, they work on small, commercial, and um, residential, and she was, um, she works at Richard Meyer before. Um, and this is some of our um, works. This is some uh, startup company office in Soma. Um, this is one of the example of the residential. The style is pretty uncluttered, clean. Um, we do interiors, a lot of like uh, details and exterior sometime. Um, so what I do there, <laughs> some of them, um, it's my s third week, so I'm still doing existing condition measures on some residentials and um, offices. Um, so how to do it, usually I measure the uh, existing condition and then I draw it in CAD, give it to the boss and then she do markups and design it, like sketch it up and then um, I draw it again in CAD and then after that um, she, she send it to the clients. That's what I learned for in two weeks. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I do uh, SketchUp models. Yeah, I learn, learn SketchUp. A lot of like small firms um, really need it. And um, how do I get the job? Um, my advice to you guys is not to be too picky about it. Um, I literally just Google architecture firm on Google and then you got that information right there and then you just open it you see careers on their website just apply it 
Um, this is my uh, resume. Uh, basically, um, first thing, I think they want to know your work experience. Um, I did two internships, one in my home country in Indonesia and one in Japan in Junya Ishigami. Um, my advice is they kind of ask you to, um, do you have a work experience in, in the States? So if you have time in summer or something, um, I suggest you do it in, in the States. And if you want to have other experience, you can also um, do it in your home country, for example, if you're like an international student. Um, and then after that, you... Uh, maybe if you're on Spring Show, um, put it there or like Studio Awards. Um, they want to know your education, BARC or MARC, and then skills. Um, a lot of these I learned from the professional workshop. Um, and cover letter. So what I did is um, first paragraph, just tell them that you are interested in like joining their firm, and then tell them if you're like a student, like a fresh graduate, or if you want an internship. Um, just say you're still a student, and then kind of like praise them about like what like their firm, and then maybe um, you can kind of like said to them that you really like their work, really connecting with their concept and stuff, and their style. And then, um, and then kind of um, tell them what you're good at, basically, like skills, like literally technical skills, and then your personal kind of like, um, what's your strength, basically. And then sum it up by, you know, like, um, it's like you're, it's the best place for you to like um, start your professional career or get a experience in internship and stuff. Basically, um, show them that you're really interested in it. Um, and then what I send to them, usually I didn't send my portfolio. I send uh, my resume, cover letter, and work sample because I think it's like, more straightforward and easier for them since they have a lot of job to do. Um, yeah, this is basically maybe you can um, show different types of um, building typology and depending on what um, firm that you're applying to. Um, this is like housing, um, this is like visitor centers, um, high rise if it's like a big company. And I put four, three of them are academic, and uh, one of them are m from my previous internships. Um, so they kind of know like what you learn from the internship, not just from the academic side. And if you have some of um, recommendation letter from your internship, put that in too. I think it really helps. And yeah, uh, what else? Salary negotiation. Um, I think I researched that fresh graduate, don't take my word, but it's <laughs> the median is like 38,500. But you should ask, like if, if they ask you, don't, don't tell them how much you want, so basically. <laughs> tell the, uh, wait until they ask you and then you set your expectation. Don't don't say the median. I think uh, say your expectation, and then you go from there. What else? Visa issues. Um, I'm still F1. Did OPT. Um, OPT. I think they got three years for us now. STEM. Uh, and I think you should apply OPT before you graduate, like th three months. I think. So if you're graduating in December, um, you want to work on January, basically three months before January. Um, 
comparison in little life and professional. No homeworks, <laughs> <laughs> um, but more responsibility in the workplace, more intense, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so welcome, uh, my name is uh, Moritz. Uh, I'm also a recent graduate. Actually just got today my diploma. Uh, <laughs> I had to sign it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so I'm working at uh, Herring and Worley, uh, if the video will load. Uh, it's in uh, San Carlos. Uh, it's a very small firm. Uh, it's me, uh, an architect, an engineer, and then a financial advisor slash secretary. Um, I hope the Wi-Fi is a little bit working. But um, oh yeah, um, yeah, that will come later in the slide. But uh, so I'm already uh, working there since four years. Uh, during school, I did some, uh, or it started with an internship, and then it became more work, and um, yeah, I just stayed there. Um yeah uh so so I'm yeah I'm now working full time uh <laughs> I would just skip some slides I guess um yeah so um I'm now working there full time sometimes I just take an afternoon off like today um he's very nice he's uh, at age he's 75 uh and a structural engineer just uh retired um <laughs> he's like 80 um <laughs> so I'm kind of the the youngest over there uh, but it's it's super fun it, because they are so old. You learn in the old school. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm his only draftsman. Uh, so he before I was there, he did everything by hand. Um, it was great to see. Uh, and also, I can teach him. He can teach me. And especially because we are so close, uh, because we have just one space, uh, I just walk over to the structural engineer, ask him questions, and debate if we should do it that way or not. Because. I'm kind of in between the structural engineer and the uh, architect itself, and I have to negotiate which I or kind of what we're gonna do. Um, otherwise, you can just skip this slide. Um, as you can see in this image, uh, we do mostly um, curved walls, curved beams. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Or maybe. Oh, well, we don't see the video of the projects, but maybe later we can. Uh, you will see the model, so that will work too. So this is kind of the office, uh, very messy. I try every day to clean it up. Um, <laughs> but then the next day there is more paper and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, I'm sitting at one of the chairs. It's very narrow and very bright, but it's, uh, it's nice and cozy. So as I said, it started uh, four years ago uh, as an intern. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, he was then... 70, I guess. Um, so yeah, so what am I doing uh, during the day? So he gives me sketches, and I will just uh, translate it into uh, drawings. Um, so these are one of the sketches. Some of them has measurements, some of them don't. I have to figure out the, the, the stair width and, and uh, how many threads. And, um, and yeah, just start from there. Um, as you can see, a, a pool addition. He gives some sketches. I will work it out. Um, and mostly it starts with uh, roof beams because we're mostly using curved roofs uh, and very intriguing, sometimes in two curves or every curve in another direction. Um, so we just lay them out. We're using Vectorworks uh, because I'm used to that uh, from, uh, because of my previous uh, school. Um, and we never really trans uh, transformed to AutoCAD or Revit. Um, it's also a little bit easier to do it in, I, I just in CAD instead of a 3D model uh, because they have so many curves and sometimes you have to cheat a little bit, um, especially in the elevations, as you can see. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, and then we do also master planning. It was for a client who bought a piece of land. He wanted to make uh, 25 parcels and then it was the idea that our firm would design every year maybe one building. Uh, so it will become uh, the Herring and Worley neighborhood, maybe. Um, <laughs> so they, yeah, those are the models. They are one eighth. Uh, some of them are quarter scale, just chipboard, uh, just by hand, no laser cutting. Uh, this is one of the first projects I did all by myself, uh, talking to the client because it was a good friend of him. 
and he did already multiple houses. Uh, this is one that we are working on right now. You will see some of the pictures later. Uh, that was one of my first models I made <coughs> as an intern. Um, this is the most recent one. It's a uh, apartment complex or condo in Brisbane. Some other one at the coast. And then this is one of his uh, models as well. So as you can see, very curvy. Um. <laughs> yeah. So then we, uh, when the client is satisfied and the building department is okay with our uh, ideas, we're just going to do Seville drawings. Um, some of them I make myself. Some of them we go to a, a consultant. Foundation plans I do myself. Um, after a while, I know what to do and what he wants. So uh, I just do it, and then he will check in on me and see if we do it right. I will go to the... Uh, structure engineer and see um, if it really works or if we have to make the the walls thicker uh, as well as planting uh, they want to have a landscape plan so that's what we do too um, we don't really need a consultant for that uh, we just like to do it indoors um, as well as uh, contacting the suppliers uh, the window factory in China uh, I will contact them, send them this, they will send us the shop drawings and we check them together and then when I think it's okay, I will go to my boss and say, hey, uh, this is the price, this is what it is, uh, do we agree? Um, and I think especially because over such a long time period that I'm working already there, he trusts me uh, and I also feel comfortable in doing so. Uh, and then we go to the job site, uh, putting on the polls to see uh, for the town uh, meeting as well to see if it is you know, okay. Um, so my boss goes every day to the job sites, um, and I go once a week. Uh, especially, or I haven't been in a long time because it was raining, and with my shoes I don't really uh, <laughs> go into the mud. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some of them are framing, yeah. <laughs> or boots. Yeah. Here you can see some of the framing work of the roofs. Yeah, we're just using glue laminated beams. So we make them on site, and sometimes we have to <coughs> test them. Uh, so this is the crew with the, with the boss. Uh, and they just put sandbags on the roof to see uh, if it would hold. And so this is also part of the, the daily uh, basis. So even though I liked it so much and still do love it, I, uh, I look forward to a new uh, experience. And... Um so I was very honest to my uh, with my boss, and if you can click on the video. So I will just show you my portfolio, and while I'm showing it, I will just tell my experience of the interviews. Um, so the first one uh, I did an interview with was, uh, was with uh, Seol. They contacted me and said, hey, we are interested. Uh, your name came up. Uh, would you like to meet? And I said, sure. Um, uh, be because, you know, you just graduated. You want to do maybe something else because... Where I'm working now is just my first experience, and I think multiple experiences are better. Uh, so I just showed them my portfolio. It was very nice, uh, uh, just very casual. Uh, and they mostly ask you what kind of programs are you using, um, and then you just explain how many layers you use. And, uh <laughs> and then also they, they ask you what, are, what is intriguing about your projects or what did you uh, interested in. Uh, especially with my thesis, uh, because we were so aligned with their philosophy and my thesis. So we talked mostly about that. Uh, sections, they love sections, so I didn't put in that much, so please do more. Uh, and also very important is they want to see collaboration. So this was uh, one of our projects, uh, 450, I did together with John Castaneda. And they were mostly interested about, so how did the um, communication went uh, with the two of us? Uh, what is your technique of um, kind of using your ideas, but also his, and how are you collaborating in that sense? And also to say maybe your idea is not as good as mine, or vice versa. Um, and especially how you deal with that. That was most of the questions that they asked me. Um, so yeah, I just showed them my work. And then um, I also did another inter uh, other interview, uh, what was, also very smooth, I would say. It was just a nice conversation. Uh, especially also because you want to know them and they wanted to know you. Uh, so therefore, just ask questions. Don't be afraid uh, 
to to say wrong questions because you know from the internet you can get a lot of information but not everything um, and I learned a lot about the firm and even more about their structure because that's what you cannot see in on the internet I would say uh, so I believe this is my last um, few slides and then so while you're going to your to your interview you have your portfolio book and I also brought my uh, thesis book uh, that you can just show and that are very interested in but also to bring a an envelope um, if you take Mary Scott's class the professional uh, portfolio class Thank you. <laughs> um, so then we'll go to the next slide. Oh, thank you. So first, we'll start with your cover letter. Uh, actually, the cover letter here is just uh, one that I made through uh, or during the class. Uh, I never really used it because uh, it wasn't necessary because um, previous um, instructors came to me and they asked if I wanted to have an interview. So therefore, uh, it was already very informal. Um, uh, and then, yeah, just your resume. Uh, as Dennis said earlier, just show your experiences, um, your skills, um, and maybe also a small introduction about who you are. Uh, so then, yeah, I just gave him kind of a small package um, with the kind of the same um, yeah, layout. Uh, and then some work samples as well. I did five. Uh, just to just just to show a, a few of my uh, work, uh, and especially also uh, if I go one back, um, if this is your collaboration project, also name uh, your partner's project as well. It's very important. Uh, don't claim it that it's all yours. What well is fine. Um. <laughs> 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 so um, yeah, uh, I just put in some words uh, because I think that's very important to kind of give away. Be curious. Uh, there are a lot of people around you that are interested in you. Uh, and if they ask you or send you an email saying, hey, we are interested, do you want to meet? Sure, even if you're not known about the firm itself, just see what happens and maybe something you know, will happen later. Uh, or maybe it doesn't really work out in this firm, but maybe they know someone else that is interested in you. So then you get all the connections. LinkedIn is a great tool to uh, stay connected and be prepared. Uh, I have these folders, uh, a few prepared. So when I had the interview and they asked me, I was able to say, okay, maybe tomorrow or the, or the week after, and I was ready to go. So that's something uh, to take away. So it's very important. Stay friendly, not only to your in, uh, interviewee, but also to the receptionist. Uh, that's the first person that sees you and that meets you. And... Uh, and I believe they're really going to talk to them and say, hey, what was your first impression? Maybe not only the receptionist, but maybe everyone else in the firm as well. So don't think the interviewee is the most important person. Uh, stay loyal. Um, and I, and that kind of goes back to uh, where I'm working right now. I was very honest and say, uh, I'm already working here four years, uh, but I'm looking for a new experience. So maybe in the next few months, I might go somewhere else. Uh, so I will do interviews in the in the meantime. And he said, sure. Um, he was very interested in what kind of firms I was choosing. Uh, and also, it makes it much easier because you don't have to say that you have to go to the dentist because you're not going three times to the dentist in a month, <laughs> right? Um, so that's very important. And also, uh, because my, um, and that goes to the next one, you know, you have to be patient. It takes a long time sometimes. They have to wait, and I'm still waiting. Um, for for one of my opportunities, uh, but because of that, um, and that's what Dennis was saying, three months before the uh, before you graduate, you have to apply for your OPT because it takes three months. Uh, in December, I wanted to go back uh, home uh, for Christmas, so I had to apply even earlier to be on time with my OPT. What means that I have only 90 days after December, or actually it started already before December, that you have to find a job and uh, put in the paperwork. Um, so I was kind of on the edge of not having the paperwork because I didn't want to ask my current boss because I thought I have already another job in January, uh, but I didn't. So I asked him and say, sorry, uh, but I still need your help for the paperwork. And he said, sure. Um, and uh, that would, you know, he be loyal because 
he likes you and then he wants to do something back. And even it was so positive that he said, okay, what is the next job uh, going to pay you? And I said, oh, it will be around this and this. And the other firm offered me this. He said, oh, I think you just got a raise. <laughs> so <laughs> it, you never know what happens, right? Uh, and most of all, uh, be yourself. Um, if you're not yourself during the interview, um, where would you start? Okay? Uh, they like you or they don't. And if they don't like you, then you're maybe not the right fit. Uh, so just be yourself, uh, be relaxed, uh, and then uh, you will become successful, maybe sooner or later. Uh, uh, so the last uh, slide, I always was curious about you know where to get your materials. Um, so the the business cards, Moo, is a great service, very fast, high quality. Uh, portfolio book is Blurb, um, also pretty reasonable priced. Uh, as well, uh, or you have also Lulu, but uh, I like the service of Blur better because they check it first before they're going to print and they will email you if it is incorrect. Uh, and then just the rest, yeah. I did it back home, <laughs> uh, but there are a lot of other uh, options uh, in the Bay. Uh, so thank you for, uh, for your time. I'm Irina. I graduated on 2016 and then I've been working for Saida Sullivan Design Partner almost four years. I started from internship and then turned into full time. <laughs> we specialize in affordable housing and renovation and multifamily project. And this is Kimi and she's our office mascot. And whenever you're stressed out about your project, go pet her and you'll be happy. And this is one of the projects. Um, we have so many award-winning projects. Just one of the example, um, I built the physical model when I was doing internship. And my boss told me to don't look at the rebel model. And I was like, why? It's great exercise to learn how to read the construction document. Because when we were in school, we get to pull out whatever in our head from the design and then just turn into 3D model. That's not that difficult compared to read somebody else's drawing and understand where you have to look for. And I don't know how many times I missed a laser cutter because it just took me so long. Didn't really think about it. Just sketch it out first and learn from what I did. Rene Casanova apartment, that's also a word winning project we have and uh, it's um, supportive housing. And right now, I uh, ri not right now. Last year, I was teaching an intern how to build a model. And she built 10 times faster than me because I did not tell her. I told her to think about it, read it, and understand, then start building a model. Because I didn't read the drawing far enough and start building model without making any test pieces. And it took me really long time and she didn't miss laser cutter too. Hunter's Point project. This project is almost complete and I was when I was an intern I worked on my men my mentor gave me red lines drawing and worked on the CAD check if it's okay and then keep working in CAD and then tell me that's not right and I have to go back and fix it. Right now, last year I went to Punch Walk and it needs a lot of love <laughs> on before image and after renovation, it looks much better. And that's the interior, as you can see. Professional life. So I'm going to share my weekly schedule. Monday, we usually have an office lunch to talk about how everyone's project is going. And sometimes we schedule lunch and learn to call different product people to give us a presentation, continue education, learn about new product. It's really important. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I have OAC meeting. I go with my boss and walk around the site, take picture, write few reports. 
And sometimes I have punch walk, depends on the week and days. And then on Friday, I had on last month, I had to go to DBI, Department of Building Inspection. You may wait there a whole day, never know. And then punch walk after that. After you graduate, we don't have to do homework anymore. Yay! That's not true. <laughs> we still have to study if you're trying to get architectural license. So I plan to study every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and weekend, but I cheated that weekend. I went to Tahoe. So that's our office lunch. That's everyone in the office. Talk about project or something casual, depends on the week. We just discussed about code this Monday, how important to double check it and read it. And that's the site visit at Westside Courts near Japantown. It's renovation project. I walk around the site, take pictures, and send few reports. That's also a renovation project in Westbrook around Hunter's Point. They're making actually a playground now and should be done in a couple weeks. Punch with punch walk with coworker and intern. We all have to make sure everything looks right before we send the substantial completion form. And we usually divide up and say one person have iPad, the other person have blue tape, and one of the other person just double check between each other, say, oh, you're missing this item. No, you didn't check that. Example, when you go to field and take measurement, make sure your notes is legible for your coworker because you can't read chicken scratch and put in a drawing. And I will double check with my coworker, make sure she can read my chicken scratch. And office work. So we do work on CAD and Revit and SketchUp. And sometimes my favorite program is 3D Max as usual, and that's my desk. If you don't clean, it will get still dirty. Doesn't matter if you're a student or professional. It's uh, sketches for color study. It's in Santa Rosa. Hopefully it will start soon. And we need to keep the historical brick facade. So I did the color study to see if it worked with what's above. And then confirm with the boss before putting the 3D model. And that's the render for the project. But before going to job interview prep, so when you're working as a professional, you never know what kind of software you're going to use in the office. Do not say, I'm really good in Rhino. That's all I can use. You have to be flexible and be able to use multiple software because they can probably give you something, and you have to work with it. And I told my boss, I need a day to study if I can do this or not. But I need a day to study how this file is and know how long it's going to take for me to produce before the deadline. Job interview prep. Be prepared all the time. Because you never know who's going to ask you when. I have my resume, website, business card, portfolio ready before my final presentation. Because when you do your final presentation, your teacher is going to bring their friends, their coworkers. They might like your project. You never know. And then in school, when we work on a project, your professor knows your project more than you, probably. But your guests don't know your project. And then <laughs> during my, fi not my final thesis presentation, but during my presentation, there are people actually ask if I'm interested to work in their firm. And that's my thesis project. And when you put stuff together, it's important to put, I call eye candy, <laughs> something pretty, because they will, if if you if somebody if you catch somebody's eye, they will still look at your project around it and see, oh, what did you do? I'm interested. Let me take a look. And your board has to speak it like itself, the idea. And this will be the great example for the four-year studio housing project with my partner, 
Mike Donahue, we, and then when you go to job interview, they will ask you, how did you work with your partner? How did it go? And it went really well. And if you're lucky, or if you work hard, you'll get into Spring Show. That's the photo from 2016. And that's my website contact. I always leave this on my business card to have everyone to have access to the website. So after people look at it and are interested to me, they can send me email. Like, are you interested? And I have some cards and resume example to share with you guys if you need an example to take a look at it. And after you get a job, how to keep up, how to survive in the firm. Try to study outside office. When you get home, just don't go out and I'm going to grab drink with friends and just go out. Yes, you wish. Maybe only on Friday. Take notes when your boss tell you something that you think it's important or doesn't matter. Just take notes because you might need it later. And ask questions. If you don't know, ask them. But just don't keep asking questions. Before you ask anything, you should at least look up and try and spend 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Then ask questions. And then watch people, your mentor or your boss, how they work. Like what they talk about in OSC, how, how they answer the question. Like if you go to the meeting or job site, they might ask you something it's like, hey, what is this one? How are you going to do it? How can you confirm it? Can you, are you agree with it? If you're not sure even 1%, don't say, oh, yeah, yeah, this is correct. Don't say that. Tell them I'll get back to you. I think that will be the best answer because you're not 100% sure and you don't want to give a wrong answer to them. So if you're not sure, check in with your boss or go back to office, check with, with the drawing and call them. Say, hey, I checked drawing. This is the answer. And don't wait for somebody to sp spoon feed you. Just don't sit there and say, where's my work? Look for it. And look for what you can do. There's always plenty of stuff to do in the office. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luna. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce my office. I joined my office since last year. Uh, I worked there since I started with my CPT. And my office is the California-based, uh, which is has two offices. One is in San Diego, one is in San, Di uh, San Francisco. And mostly, they do the urban planning and the retail and some of them do the healthcare, and the job that I do the most is mostly is the misuse and the retail. So this is the four of the projects that we were working on. So the first one, City Line, they uh, that's the most that I was working on. So this project is uh, based on the urban planning. It was uh, in Sunnywell downtown, six blocks of planning of with the uh, theater and uh, retail and apartments. So this project is takes long time. And since I asked them, the files is they start from uh, 2011. So until now, they're still working on that. So I remember I was working for their um, presentation books. Uh, the version that I do is from the version O to version T. So imagine who did the version A to rest of them. So that's that's the one of the thing that I think is oh so different from the school, because the school is once you done your final presentation is you feel you're done, you finish everything, but in real life is some of the project. It feels like it can be never done in a way until they really like build the buildings. So the 
I feel like in the office, the most things sometimes I do the different things. So sometimes they ask me to draw a plan. So we use uh, AutoCAD. So because I was uh, working on the urban planning and uh, sometimes it's the building design. So they sometimes I learn how to draw parking. It sounds so easy, but depends on the different city. Uh, sometimes my supervisor will ask me, oh, check the dimensions. For this city, it's different. And sometimes you need to think, even think about handicap. And also think about, oh, what's the landscape and how the curbs, radius. So that's the, how details will go in the real life. And sometimes I also draw some elevation. So elevation, mostly they use um, SketchUp. And for that one is, I remember in the beginning, I was not really familiar with that software, but you need to, it's kind of like pressure in the beginning, but you need to keep on, keep on and practice. And then in the end, you will get it. So for the elevation, that is mostly is focused on the materials. And sometimes they ask you to pick a color so I say, oh, that's really fun job. I would like to do that because sometimes you're tired of uh, watching uh, use the AutoCAD only lines. So once time and my supervisor asked me to, oh, pick color for this wall. And then I said, okay, finally. And then they said, oh, go to the back library and find the color and mostly use uh, Benjamin Moore. Okay, I went there. There was uh, four big files. And for the color, it's like there have thousands of colors. I said, wow, that's even like more color than we do in the Medicare. I said, okay. So I have to open that and do that and until pick few selections and then ask my supervisor. I said, oh, do you think this is good or not? And uh, sometimes it's just different. Like once uh, my supervisor showed me that once you pick a color and then they pick the material in the, uh, in the site. And in the site is you also need to know which side do you want to put this materials. For example, if it's in the sun or it's facing to the north because they will look totally different. And so, and the last part is I do the presentation prepare. Mostly is like that's like what I mentioned, is from AutoCAD, Photoshop, sometimes SketchUp, and in the end, InDesign. So it's if I do this these days, so every time, every day is like repeat. AutoCAD, Photoshop, InDesign. AutoCAD, Photoshop, InDesign. So and the different than the in the school is because sometimes the file is huge. So in AutoCAD, they linked different files. So that's in the school, like I've never used them. It's like in the beginning, it's just confused. And also they, um, they link the AutoCAD into Photoshop. So every time you change the AutoCAD, and it's automatically connect to your Photoshop. And definitely connect to your Photoshop to InDesign. So every time is just save you a lot of time, but just don't forget to update every time. Okay, so I got my job, I think I was part of, I was lucky. So first, don't feel shy or shame to ask your friends or your instructor, just bothering them and ask them again and again. So I asked my friend and or schoolmates or instructors. So I I got my job as uh, I asked one of uh, my schoolmates, and he graduated a few years ago. So he he told me, oh, actually I just jumped to a, in a new firm, and then oh they need a junior. Do you want to go come and uh, do the interview? I said yes, cool, and then. I went there and then I got a job. And so another way like 
obvious, I also apply online. So same as them as just apply so many. I don't remember how many firms that I apply and search online and upload my resume and work samples. And you can also find some jobs open in AIA job board. So just apply, just upload. So same, like don't be picky in the beginning. So you need to start and then as soon as you get the first step and you can keep going. And also for the, mm, for the interview, um, I experienced, for now I experienced two different interviews. So one is you talk, you as a main talker. And another one is your um, employee, they talk. So the first one I went to is called B, uh, BCJ. They designed a Apple store in New York, the glass box. So I was really interested in their job and then I went there and said, oh, can I just interview? Even you don't want to hire me. I just want to talk. So I was lucky they gave me the chance. So I went there. So normally they the interview takes uh, an hour. So I went there because they said, oh, we're interested about your work, so talk about it. So I remember the whole hour, I was keep talking my project. So they didn't inter interrupt me, and then I was just keep talking. And my office, I remember when I got the interview, is my supervisor keep talking the whole hour. In the end, I was just, got a little bit tired. I said, can I get a chance to talk about my work? And he was just keep talking until in the end, he also feel tired. I said, oh my god, we have so many projects. I said, okay, and that's cool. <laughs> I, I, I hope I can help you. So yeah, so it really depends. Like, but be prepared still, like be prepared to like think about the time. And sometimes they want to talk, sometimes they ask you. I remember one of my friends, he got interviewed, he was not really prepared well. So for the ho whole hour, he told me, he finished his like, interview like in 10 minutes. So the in employee just got a little bit upset because, oh, you are not prepared. So every time just take your stuff, take your resume and your portfolio, just if they ask, just talk. So this is my resume and cover letter. So I was, yeah, to be honest, I didn't use them for so many times. But I was still want to talk about it because, um, so first thing you want to keep it clean and clear. So still like for my resume, I talk about my experience. That's I think the most of firm they're interested in. So what did you do before? And also the, I list my accomplishment for the school. So list all your uh, work, project, uh, uh, spring show, and also your uh, list uh, the education and the skills and the language. And for the cover letter, I may focus on the first paragraph. You want to, they want to know why you pick their office because during the interview, they might also ask you, why are you choosing us? So what's the uh, connection? Is there a connection? Or is there interesting connect with your school work? That's so be prepared. Uh, every time you go to the interview, they might ask you this question. And the second one, I talk about myself, uh, my experience. And the th third one is just you want to show your passion about your career. You want to show, oh, what what do I want in the future? What do I want to get from your firm? So don't feel shy to ask. So this is the, I pick four of my working samples. 
because I know they mostly they don't have time to look at your uh, portfolio or something. So you want to take a samples or also like use the standard paper size as they can easily print in their office. So I pick, mm, so this is the last uh, design studio, 619. So this 608, six, uh, this is my scissors, and uh, also pick the uh, wall section. So you want to show the different uh, skills you have. You want to show you can draw detail. You want to show you have ideas to show. And yeah, so just show different part. Don't show like plan for all of your work or don't show section or don't show uh, renderings. Show different parts and sh tell them, oh, I can do this and that. Okay, so this part, uh, I think I was still like struggling through this whole process a lot. So what I talk about is like I was really experienced. So <laughs> first plan ahead at least two months. That's most important and basic. And also like if you are in OPT process, so plan to apply before your EAD card expired. Otherwise, you'll get trouble because as soon as your card expired, you are still not apply. It will, might be too late. And even after you apply, your card ex expired because you apply ahead. So you still have 150 days to work. And for the OPT and OPT STEM form, okay, this one is what I experienced. So be careful, our school's website, <laughs> there uh, one link is the firm, uh, the, the form was outdated. So always make sure, go to the USCIS website to download the form and double check if the form is update. Because sometimes on the form, it shows it's not expired, but they also pick the latest one. But because if it's the old one, they will reject you. Um, the last is if you want to travel, so be prepared. And don't forget to sign I-20. I experienced once I forgot to sign my I-20. So after I crossed the border, and then the officer said, go to that room. I said, oh my god, oh my god. I was sent to the black room or called <laughs> dark room. Oh my god, they will keep me for a whole night or something like that. So <laughs> I went to the room, and then I wait. There are so many people waiting there, and then until finally, I think I waited for half hour. So they call my name and then ask me the same question, exactly the same question as the officer asked me. What do you study? And did you graduate? What do you work? And, and then in the end, he will say, don't forget sign your I-20. That's the last thing. <coughs> I said, OK, OK, I will never <laughs> forget. And then, OK, he said, you can leave. So I, I really don't want you guys to experience that because after a long travel, you don't want to stay in that small room and waiting for somebody to call your name. Okay, so the last part is academy life and professional life. For me, it's so different. Um, for example, in the school, like mostly we focus on the project is you think about area, program, programs, and site limitation. Depends what you want and depends what you're interested in. But in professional life, is every time your instructor, oh sorry, it, it's your supervisor, <laughs> yeah, also your instructor, same, will ask you, okay, so this client doesn't want this, so client has a budget, so you cannot use this material because this is expensive. And also the building code, so it's connect with the dimensions, 
And I remember I, I keep drawing the parking for a week, so different parking. So it really depends. And the city laws, different city, they might have different laws, so their dimension is different. And in the school, we learn design process, but when you graduate, you go to work, so you're learning practical details. Every time, you might hear a lot of dimensions, you might hear a lot of numbers, those things. So in the school, always keep your process sketches, drawing, model, and document them. So that's the most important is also connect with your design process because you want to show you have ability to design. And in the real life, we you always take notes. So that's the same, like you take notes, dimensions, what kind of materials we use, and the building code. So always take them and in case next time if your supervisor asks you and then you will remember and then uh, all say, oh, I have my notes. And then you will know that. Okay, so that's about it. So thank you so much. Uh, hi, I'm Agnes Gao. Uh, after I have graduated two years. So after I graduated, I went to the KPA group. Uh, the KPA group has 31 years history. Uh, it's founded in 1987, and as starter, it's uh, actually a structure firm. Then they add the architectural design in 19, uh, 1992. Uh, that's the basic history of the firm. So if you see the timeline, they start with the uh, on-call um, structure engineer for Transamerica. Uh, that's why when I search their firm, I think, oh, that's fancy. That's uh, Transamerica. That's the landmark for the <laughs> San Francisco. And they also designed like the uh, San Francisco Airport Terminal 3 with Gensler together, team up. Uh, and after I searched their website, I, I realized they work on so many different types of projects, and that's exactly what I want. So I went to, uh, well, actually, when, we, when I apply, I will talk to about my home I applied later. Uh, so actually, we work for so many different projects types like aviation, county city, federal, seismic, commercial, healthcare, education, planning, and facility yard. Um, you can see the photos. The, this one in this, uh, the top left is the Fox Theater we renovated, uh, I think that was in 2012. Then Transamerica, um, then I think that's Rich, Richmond City Hall. So you can see we work on different type of projects. And that's why I really like it. So I will talk about our recent project and uh, the projects I have involved with. Uh, the first one, I, when I get there, this project has already reached to the construction phase. This is the rendering and the for the interior. And right now, it's already built and had the grand opening like last month. Um, when I work, my typical job in this project is answer the RFIs picking up the materials, like picking up details for this project, and figure out kind of like the glass panel and even the color of the glass panel. I didn't show the whole thing. We have a website for this whole project. So this is a small terminal. Uh, in this project, I learned a lot of things about airport. So airport is more about um, circulation. Circulation of people, circulation of their staff, circulation and of their uh, luggage. So basically, it's mostly about circulation. Uh, this one is Arcade ARF. ARF stands for Airport Rescue Firefighting. So it's a basically it's a fire station. Uh, this one I worked from the start to the to the construction. Right now it's under construction right now. We are doing construction administration right now. Uh, from the start we work with clients, talked about what's their expectation, then we kind of like the client has their representative architect so actually, we design them together, drawing the detail. They will have it have specific uh, requirement or drawing sent to us. Then we kind of develop, then check with them again. So, oh, by the way, because I'm working for public agency mostly, so the process may be a little different. We don't need to go with DSA, but we need to work with the 
government, with the federal government, with the local county city government, follow their standard. Uh, and this way, I think the most funny thing for this project is when we uh, do that overhead door, they have to respond in 10, second, 10 seconds for the truck to come, come through. So that's the first time I realized, oh, yes, each project will have different uh, pro uh, requirements. Uh, this one is the most current job I'm doing, and also actually this project, I'm kind of in charge of that, this project. This is about the uh, VA Palo Alto North Campus planning. They are planning to rebuild their uh, ICI building, spinal cord injury building. Uh, so we are studying how to uh, arrange the space for their North Campus, uh, and also try to programming for the spinal cord. And I learned a lot for this because for in school, I never studied how to plan a hospital. And even here, I, I have to learn all about what's acute patient, acute care, what's long-term care, uh, and also how, how do they keep the transport the patient. So that's kind of interesting to work on this project. Uh, this is Sunnyvale, very Sunnyvale. That's an office building. Uh, right now, the lobby is constructed. The, uh, the office is on hold. But the con when I enter this, we are reaching construction documents. Uh, East County Hall of Justice. This just uh, finished the construction last year. We team up with Ventures. Uh, we actually, it's a design build kind of. So we actually submit our drawings to Ventures instead of the clients. Other project I work al also worked on San Francisco CLC. Um, that's this story I just want to tell is that in school, you don't have any limitation. But in real reality, you can see the bottom two uh, scheme. We actually designed the whole geometry, fan uh, fancy look building. But then the client sa saying, no, we just want to match the existing building. So the, on the top, actually, is the final production. No matter how much you put, how much how much effort you put in this project for designing, always the client will make the final call to see which one they actually do. So I encourage you, encourage you guys to dream bigger in your thesis project because after that, <laughs> clients will decide what that they want. Um, the on the right, that's the Cupertino assessment. So we also do the assessment, so we go to the building, go to the city and evaluate their building, check every aspect, MEP, structural, and their envelope, everything, and document it and give recommendation to the city, like do you, you sh probably should renovate this or you probably should tear it down and rebuild. Um, that's basically it. So about applying jobs. Um, I did just mostly just go to AI, I went to AIA job board, and also uh, just search then search all their website, contact them. No matter I think at the start point, contact every every company you can find. Uh, and also a, a good thing is referral. I got the interview because of my friend's referral. Um, I but I didn't take it because I want to go to the KPA. They have mo multiple uh, project types. That's why, and another company is doing housing. So I want to explore more project types. Uh, and also the career fair, try to find more career fair. At least you can talk to them. You know, if you send to the uh, website, they probably will ignore you. But if you go to career fair, at least you have a chance to talk to them in face. No matter what, well, at least you can get the experience of the interview, right? So I. In strongly encourage you to go to the career fair. No, if your portfolio is not ready, doesn't matter, go. As long as you have a resume, just go there and talk to people. Show, show them your, your uh, projects. That's really important. Uh, for the resume, I didn't put mine. I put other people because I think this is even better than mine. <laughs> uh, so they graphically um, make it very precise, like what's your uh, software skill, what's the ex work experience. So as other people saying, uh, work experience is really important. If you can get an uh, intern, do it, because people will emphasize on that. 
um, and I can share a story. So since my company has sent me to two career, career fairs in two years, so I ha actually had the experience as the on the other side of the table. Um, uh, when other people talk to me, okay, take your interview. That's the, the two one I want to talk about. First, be concise about your projects. I met several people, they will continually talk to me about their project. Even how do they move this wall? And they, how do they kind of like pick the color for that wall? So <laughs> if, the <laughs> if they didn't ask you about that, don't talk t to that detail. <laughs> you will bore them. You will lose them in a second. So talk about your major idea first. Be concise about your project and flip through. If they ask you about, oh, how do you design this, then you answer. But don't be like, oh, this wall is this. This room is that. You will lose them. The second one is you have to show your eager to learn and willingness to learn. You don't, because some people, when I graduate, I thought, oh, I learned so much. I, I know everything. But actually now, <laughs> it's not the case. If you're going to work, what you learn in school is actually the minimum, the minimum basic stuff you, ha you have learned. So you have to show them, I really want to learn. I really want to study. Your, your company will be my start point. It's not, oh, I, ha I have so much to offer to you guys. Um, the third one is research about the company and ask questions about their daily work. So that's uh, another thing. Um, for me, when I ch try to choose my comp choose the company, I want to choose a company with multiple projects, with multiple project types. So I don't know if you are in really interested in housing, search their work. If you, are, you want, really want just do housing, ju just go to the uh, housing company. If you really do want to do public work, go to the public work company. So different company will have their different expertise. Search that to find which one fits you the most. Um, of course, you have to be on time. That's the first in impression of you. Uh, the next one is talk about what you can offer. Like you can, you have, you can, you have good layout skill. If you have good drafting skill, like using CAD really fast, I can draft in one hour. And you, uh, if you can, you have very good management of time and task. Actually, that's very important because in company when we do submittal, most time is you have to communicate with con sub consultant and manage the project, finish the submittal. And the last one is be a team player. So you have to show your willingness to work with other people. It, you cannot be kind of like a control freak saying, I have to do this. This is what I, I did. So you, you have to say you, you will be cooperative. You can, you can compromise for some, some things. So that's another thing I suggest. Uh, then uh, you can see my work sample. As Luna said, I suggest for your work sample, be very um, comprehensive. So show everything you worked on, like floor plan. You, you will have your floor plan. You will have your uh, uh, site plan. You will have your diagram. You will have your model. And also like show your multiple skills. And I also include my interior design. I show them I can do a rendering, but they didn't actually need. But that's the option. And I'll definitely show your work sections for every company. They want people to work on the construction document. Because as you know, well, probably in your school, your design is your final point. But in company, in your, um, in Korea, actually, the design is only 15%. 15% schematic design. Then 35% is de design development. The rest 65% is construction document. So you can see the proportion of the design and the construction document. So I showed all my construction document uh, work. And I want to talk about visa, OPT, and H1B. Uh, OPT, I won't repeat the things they talked about. Timing is important. Remember to do that. And remember your 90 days um, grace time. Don't exceed that. You'll be in trouble. Um, H1B, you have to plan it very well. It's that the deadline is April, and if you want to apply it, you have to prepare at least February. Uh, another thing I want to show you, since I have got my H1B, 
um, I think that I'm the first one to talk about this. The H1B first, all the list right here is the list prepared by the uh, lawyer and he gave to me. So first, detailed and updated resume. That's, I think, everybody will have. The, and the, your, your education, uh, you need both education. If you have a, another degree in your original country, prepare those two. And all the transcripts. So that can be tricky because I know some people, when they graduated from uh, their original country, they, they don't have a transcript or they have lost their transcript. Keep that, make sure you have all of them. And you have, to, uh, you have the pri prior work experience letter. If you have any, you have to provide. So hopefully you can get the letter from your uh, previous uh, work company. So before you leave a company, require the letter first. Um, so three check, paycheck, you will have it from your employment. And all your other visa, I think you will have it. Um, uh, I-94, you can get from online. And co uh, transport, I think that's fine. And all I-20s, and so that's kind of tricky too. Um, some people will lost their previous I-20, so keep track on your I-20. You have to prepare all your I-20 and submit to the lawyer. And also, for last year, for my ex personal experience, a lot of my friends and I are got RFE. What RFE is the request for evidence. So after you um, submit your application, and after you are selected, you are selected, they will most uh, possibly they will send you an RFE requesting a lot of detailed information to support your application. So first, it's typical, don't panic. So most people will get it. The second is, you have to prepare all the documents per their requirements. They will give a list, prepare everything from their list, prepare everything. And prepare, you can, if you can prepare more, more that's fine, but don't let any um, subjective subject you list that out. Another thing is communicate with your employer because there are for the uh, RFE, there are two ends of the documents. The one you, you, you are preparing is actually not the major part. The one the employer is pre preparing, like they have to submit all their financial documents, all the kind of like um, secret stuff to the government. So some company will think it's overwhelming, but you have to com communicate with your company. Be very cooperative, talk to them, and uh, express your concern and express um, your willingness to work harder or something. Just because you know the employee actually paying, well, spending a lot of time on your documents. Um, another thing is work with the lawyer. The lawyer will give you another document stating all the items that can, like, you can provide. You can always communicate with him, saying, oh, do you think this is enough, or you do, what do you think is better? You can always communicate with them, then you will get a better uh, statement or document to submit. Um, another one is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Uh, so for me, I when I get the uh, RFE, I was kind of panicked because nobody told me people should get RFE. Um, I panicked and I applied for another school. I, I applied MBA, MBA uh, to kind of like, at least I can work as CPT. Um, but in retrospect, I think that's kind of like relaxing because we don't know the result anyway. So if you want to still get your experience in US, US, you, you can, that's your second way to go. So you can apply another school, get a CPT, and work as CPT. But luckily, I got the um, H1B. And during, your, during the process, they are reviewing your pro pro uh, documents, don't exit US. That's what the lawyer told me. Do not exit US. So if you have planning some trip to f uh, back to your family, plan it ahead. After you, they are uh, processing your documents, you cannot exit USA. Uh, that means you are giving up your chance. Um, another suggestion I will give is work hard, because actually the employee should will spend much more time, energy on you than the 
native people because they don't require H1B. Uh, they don't require all those documents and all the process. They are working, so my employee, they told me the work they worked on the weekend. They prepared 500 documents to support my case. So I didn't know that after I got my H1B, they told me they worked very hard and they worked 500 page document. So you have to make them think you are worth it. So you have first thing I will give it to you is be very responsive. When they t tell you to do something, just do it and give the feedback um, in time. The second thing is be a problem solver. Uh, anybody will have some problem, try to figure out. Google anything you can, if you can, if you can figure out, you, you will be helpful for other people. Uh, the third thing is give everything a try. So if they give you some task, you think, oh, I probably I don't know about that. Don't give to me. That's not the attitude. You should give it a try. Ask other people. Try to get your their idea. Or even Google. Just tr give it a try. You probably can. You will learn a lot from every kind like start point. Then you will be an expert later. Um, the fourth one is be responsible. So. Um, since now I have two other people work under me, sometimes, well, I have a lot of interns before, and we didn't keep some intern because he's trying, they are trying to push their responsibility out, saying, oh, I didn't do this. No, I don't want to do this, like this. So you have to be more responsible, saying, oh, I did this. If you make a mistake, admit that. So s saying, I'm sorry, I will uh, correct that. That's not a big deal, because everybody makes mistakes. So just be responsible responsive, then that's it. And the fourth one is try to manage the day, and the team, and the workflow. Um, I think, so for me, um, because I was, tr every day I make a list for things I need to do, and I communicate with my um, supervisor, talk about uh, what we are, wh which project we are at which point. So he's very, right now he, is very trust he trusts me or empowered me to actually manage several projects. So I think if you take that step ahead to try to manage things, they will trust you more than you can learn how to manage the project, how to manage your team. Um, the final thing is you plan your career like license and if you want to be a, be a project manager, probably you want to get an MBA or something. So that's my final suggestion. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Derek. Uh, I graduated from AU in 2015. Um, now I'm working at EDG Interior Architecture Design, and also I am a part-time workshop instructor at AU. Uh, for free and sketching skill. Um, per my architecture background, um, my job at EDG is to handle architectural design, uh, project management, documentation, um, communication between clients and consultants. Sometimes, um, not sometimes, occasionally, uh, usually, I handle the uh, architectural finishes and also millwork design. Uh, construction, administration, and technical solutions. So our office is located inside of a hangar building in Novato. We also have two another two offices, one in Dallas, one in uh, Singapore. Um, so the expertise of EDG is hospitality. We mostly focus on uh, high-end restaurants and hotels. Uh, we have projects for Four Seasons, uh, Marriott, uh, Hyatt, Ritz Carlton, Intercontinental, Andes, and etc. For restaurant, uh, we do projects for Gordon Ramsay, Charlie Palmer, uh, Caesars, and some operators in food operators in SFO. Um, so here's some images of our project. Uh, this is Andes in Scottsdale, Arizona. So it opened maybe last month. Um, Here's some renderings of the public spaces uh, at Autograph Manhattan Beach. Autograph is the branch of uh, Marriott, so it has a higher-end look and boutique style. Um, 
Marriott waterfront in Baltimore. So this is Gone Ramsey. The one on the left uh, is Pop M Grill at Caesar's Palace in Atlanta City. The one on the right is uh, uh, this one. Uh, it's Gone Ramsey Steak in Vegas. So um, for the workflow and design process, uh, we normally uh, coordinate with our marketing with uh, with clients' requirement. And then um, we pin up imagery and set up charrette to finalize the uh, scheme, SD schematic design. Uh, it's pretty much the same as what you've been doing for your studios. Um, then we also bring in our graphic team to help out with the interior art, uh, uniform, menus, and uh, signage, and etc. Uh, then we collect all the information for the presentation package and present it to our clients. Once it gets approved, uh, we move to design development DD to finalize all the uh, architectural design, FF and E, that means uh, furniture, fixture, and equipment, uh, also furni uh, finishes and accessories, and so on. So on this phase, we normally use uh, SketchUp, Rhino, Revit to finalize uh, the design. Uh, personally, I prefer rough model or messing model so that I can sketch over which works faster for me. Then if I need uh, fine renderings or beautiful model, I'll send it to the drafting company to do it for us so we can save some time to do the design. So uh, next, please allow me to go through a small project with a small team. Um, so to give you some basic understanding about interior architecture design. So to be honest, when I was a student, I would never figure out how an architecture student uh, fit in this interior world. Um, so it's a Gordon Ramsay project located inside of uh, the Harris Casino in Atlanta City. Um, so basically, the client is Caesars. Um, they want to use their money to renovate, oh, I'm sorry, this restaurant on the left. Uh, it's an old steakhouse. So they try to uh, invite Gordon Ramsay to here and bring more people to this place. Um, so we got our project manager on the team, me in charge of architectural uh, design, the other designer for the FF&E, and uh, the design director oversees everything. So this is uh, um, assisting for showing the, the entry. So this is a Mexican restaurant next to it. So it's on the second floor. Sorry, it's uh, kind of dark. Um, it's on the second floor under the atrium. And it has a kind of weird shaped facade facing to the escalator. Down there is the casino you can see. Um, so it's inside of the, the restaurant. So there you can see the bar with the, some old ugly bar stools. This is the oyster bar, which is still very ugly. We normally we hide this stainless steel surface. And this is the dining area. The ceiling is low, it's at nine foot something. They drop the, the diamond ceiling down at A foot six ish. And you can also see the tendons, sconces, ugly painting when they put on the wall. And the furniture is in the best shape. Um, I was try I was dying to remove this pink ceiling. You no, know, it's kind of cheesy, but unfortunately I couldn't make it. Um, this is the PDR, uh, which is supposed to be an acoustic barrier, but what they got is just some drapes in here. So this is the existing plan showing the current layout. Um, so basically, we're going to demo the whole uh, this area. So we got new entry, new storefront system, and the bar, new bar, and the wine uh, storage. Uh, we're going to use up some space from the Mexican restaurant next to it. Uh, I feel kind of sorry, but that wasn't my call. Yeah. So. Um, Caesars requested a new storefront uh, to be similar as the one in Vegas. So uh, we proposed two plans for them. Um, uh, you can see this is a tunnel entry with the storefront with um, red glass panels and a bigger bar and the arrival launch. Um, so I have a new layout for the seating plan. This is option two. You can see the different location for the entry and a different layout for the bar with the oyster bar integrated 
and the wine display to se separate this area from the dining and the lounge. So I did some quick sketches for the client to uh, understand or visualize how this project will look like. So these are kind of like um, potential key elements. And so this is uh, the plan for the SD package. So we combine two options. We kept the, the tunnel entry and the facade and the L-shaped bar, which is functioning better. And uh, I turn the wine display to be an architectural feature to make this place to be a chef table or wine tasting room. Um, so you see, um, for this brand, for Grand Ramsey State, uh, they requested two signature pieces. One is the red glass panel. So whenever you see red glass panel with Grand Ramsey's face, that's their steakhouse. Um, also Union Jack. So um, we did uh, another one in Baltimore. So they pretty like the Union Jack ceiling. So that's why we we gave them what they want, literally. <laughs> um, so these are these are the rough rendering for this project for SD. Um, this is the entry. You can see the his face and the tunnel. Um, the bar. We always like consider the bar to be very significant because that's where they should put their money to, and that's where they can earn a lot of money from. Um, so I try to integrate the bottle storage, wine, glass, rack, and the TV on this up shelving. And this is the main dining, so you can see the Union Jack sitting. And this is the wine room. So uh, two weeks after they approved the, the SD, the schematic design, um, they figured they couldn't afford removing the diamond ceiling. So we got to keep everything, I mean the ceiling. Uh, that means we got to revise a lot of things, like uh, the furniture, the fabric, the finishes. So that's a big move. Um, so we decided to paint over the whole ceiling to make it kind of disappear and fake it to be higher. Um, my point is, uh, anyway, we couldn't get rid of it. So how about just embrace it? Um, so I propose antique mirror at the ceiling above the raw bar, antique mirror, yes, and then try to utilize the chevron pattern to follow the, sh the shape of the, the, s the diamond and then integrate this uh, the shape to our new feature. Um, that's our plan. Um, so here's the final rendering for the DD package. Um, we try to get rid of the, the red glass panel because I happened to Yelp, uh, Gordon Ramsay, Baltimore, and then I found a terrible photo showing uh, the wood is literally bloody and red because of the, the red glass panel. It's just like horrible, it looks. And then like, you now they the client insisted to use a red panel because um, this it's kind of their signature. Not big fan, sorry. So we don't have any like Union Jack ceiling, so we put it back as art wrapping around the columns at the bar, so, um, so they can just, uh, th whenever they walk by, they can see this is a main feature. They can see from the from outside. So this is the main dining. Um, we kind of paint over everything to be blue, to make it moody and intimate. And so, but like we use brass uh, to highlight some key elements for the bar, you know, some area. So this is a PDR we, which we propose Union Jack, yeah, that's for sure. And acoustics uh, sliding panel for the room and also for the entire area. So they can enclose the PDR and open it as needed. So uh, this is some sketches I did for the client uh, uh, for to let them to understand the, un the Union Jack, the relationship between the Union Jack and the bar. So this is a bar area. So and this is uh, the oyster bar. So this is the back of the bar. And also we give them some free work uh, this is a pylon signage, which is not in our scope, but it is what it is. Yeah, and but like, which is annoying because they didn't pay this, and then like we have to deal with the coordination, you know, for the manufacturer, which is very annoying, to be honest. Um, so I want to show you um, as I went through this project because I want to show you like how uh, I contribute my skills as um, 
an interior designer with architecture background. Um, I did have fun with um, all the architectural design and selections of finishes. I think like maybe if you're interested, so give it a shot. Um, also, I can I want to bring up licensing. Um, you still can be licensed architect, uh, even though you're working in an interior firm, because as long as you uh, fill up your XAP hours, architectural experiences, experience card program, I guess, and then like uh, pass all the exams, you you still can be the arch licensed architect. Yep, um, that's what I've been doing. So how did I get hired? That's interesting because per my design director, he said, um, I kind of messed up my interview really bad, but he hired me because of my thesis, um, uh, which is nice. Uh, I also interview interns. Um, personally, I, I mean, no matter how you um, messed up, I mean, how, how no matter how badly you presented your project, they won't bother me a lot, to be honest, uh, as long as you act normal and you got nice portfolio and this is book. I mean, that would be a yes for me, but the final call will be depending on the HR for sure. But yeah, so here, I wanna show you this uh, because this pages, I took the photos of uh, the portfolio of an intern in my office. They just, I feel that impressive, way better than mine. So I just wanna show you guys like, you see the everything he hand drew the contents or the items. So, but you can see the drawings, the diagrams. Uh, but like, unfortunately, he's not from <laughs> AU. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is um, so c some company will request some samples, but not the whole uh, entire portfolio. So try to create a compressed version of your portfolio or work sample. Basically, w uh, that's what they already talk about. Um, so at last, please allow me to share some thoughts and ideas. Uh, after I started my career, work harder for sure. Because um, the harder you work, the more confident you can you will feel. And then it's not about the salaries; it's about the experiences you got. Um, try to find yourself a mentor. Um, it's important because uh, you know what? Uh, my mentor is a licensed architect. Uh, she signed my hours. No, it's I'm joking, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, because um, she or he will be the best person you can turn to whenever you make mistakes or you have questions. Um, they always get your back and have your back and um, cover your mess. That's really nice, you know. Um, try to keep yourself up to date and throw yourself into the loop of this industry and own the network. Um, then set up some future goals for your career so you can know like where you're heading to. And I think that's it. Thank you. I want to I want to thank all of our presenters um, from the scale of really small, beautiful boutique uh, projects to robust structure, to housing, to bringing dignity, to master plans that take a few iterations and years to a complex firm that covers many different kinds of projects to a restaurant that is down to the detail of the place setting and the red, red glass. And we have an opportunity to share with all of you what your questions may be and feel free to ask them because now it's your turn to put out those questions that you may have been holding back a bit. And this is a very experienced group of graduates from just recent to two and a half years. Yeah, I have a question because I heard that a lot of you have already have like experienced like either interview or intern or like work with intern. So like how likely like an intern can stay as a like a formal employee? So our firm hired two interns last summer. One we we keep kept one and we let one go. So if you perform very well and you uh, you can 
be a very kind of important role in your team, I think there's a great chance you, are, you can be in the company. So during your intern, try your best to perform better, to perform better than you already perform even, <laughs> to try to win the employee to get, to get your job offer. Hi, uh, I'll ask a very practical question. So, are you currently having any open positions in summer? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we do. So, we are looking for more technical people. So, not just broad, broad graphic. We are looking for people work with construction details, work with CAD. So, if you are can that kind of person, you can give me your resume. <laughs> And my office, they also like uh, would like to have an intern, and during the summer, so normally they will work for two months and then they will go back to school. So I think for now they are also interesting for some juniors. So if somebody is interesting, so prepare your resume and hand it to me <laughs> if you want. This is the very reason why you're here, right? For networking. <laughs> I also had a question. Uh, first of all, thank you all. Um, my question actually is three questions. So, um, uh, as a foreigner candidate, candidate, and um, we for we graduate with this OPT. Um, do you, how how is that affecting your interview? How do you bring this confidence and? Um, during interview, um, how, yeah, so how is it affecting you and how do you have a, uh, ever have an experience to, to uh, make it uh, work for you? Like um, this first one. And the second one is after you get the job, when you're working in the office, there is this uh, culture in confidence and what role are you playing in the in the office? And uh, um, you just talked about uh, which role you wanted to to be and which role you want to avoid. To because finally we wanted to get the H one B, uh, so we really want to keep it. <laughs> so that's that's the two question. And the the third one is um, the uh, I don't know if. Anyone of you have the experience to apply for the STEM program? And if our degree, uh, so S T E M, so the uh, STEM, sorry, STEM, uh, is our degree um, qualified to apply for that? So that's the three questions. Thank you. Those are really good questions. So I do know, uh, at least for OPT, that the Academy of Art does definitely qualify. So that's the equal parallel is because we are STEM, the OPT applies to all of you. So you all have that opportunity. And so the first two questions are actually pretty important. Uh, which one of our panelists would like to start that? Uh, will I start with the first question? So it's always part of the <laughs> conversation. They know that you're international. so. Uh, you know, and they know that you are seeking for an H-1B or maybe a green card. So it's always good to be clear about what are your future uh, goals as well. Uh, when I did my interview, they were saying, are you planning to stay longer or are you thinking about something else? And uh, at the firm that I was having the interview, they were international. So I said, maybe I will go back home and uh, maybe go to the, to the office uh, in Europe or something. Uh, but just be clear and also um, be clear if you want to stay there longer or not. Uh, and I think that's very important uh, you know, for me as a, as a beginner, but I maybe you have maybe a little bit more experience. Uh, but I think just to be clear about what your ideas are uh, and just be open about it, yeah. Uh, so for me, I was being very transparent. I told them, when I was at interview, I told them I want H1B sponsor. 
because I got several interviews, I have to check which company will offer me the H-1B. But when I get, get, him, get familiar with my boss, he told me that, actually, you don't need to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> what he said is, you can get in the company first, then you are being a very important role. Then the company cannot, when the company cannot leave you, they have to sponsor you. They are willing to sponsor you. <laughs> That's what he told me. You can choose either one. <laughs> I don't know. I can answer the second question, like uh, the role you want to be in the company. Um, I don't know, maybe just my firm, so they're very like open for you, so uh, if I want to do the design, so I can just like, for next project, I can do the design instead of uh, project management. Sometimes you just get very bored, you know. Some, um, but sh one point is like, try to speak up. I know like, we were very green or something, so we just shy and like, uh, I follow what you want to do, and then like, but try to speak up, and then they will value your opinions or comment, like, when you grow up, so you f they feel, oh, they find potential, and then they can use your skills. So just be confident. But like, my point is like, the harder you work, the more you work, so you feel uh, you get more experiences, and then you feel more confident. So just need some time. Take it easy. Yeah. I can answer the second question, too. So when, when I first interned at not the SSBP, I was an intern at other place. I did not know what role I wanted to do, so I just sit there and literally like they spoon feed me like, here's a project you can work on, and that's all I did. And then after I got into the current office, and at like after four years, now I will tell my boss, I want to wor work on this project, that project. I will tell her what I want. Just don't don't be shy and just sit there and wait until your boss gives you something. And just be, be active, like, is there any new project? What's going on? Just keep asking questions and see what's new opportunity. Because when we do the, um, uh, not IDP, AXP, we have to fill out certain hours for, like, CAs and instruction documents and all those categories. Once you reach all those hours, if, if you don't move on next one, you're going to keep gaining, like, same hours on one category. Like, I have, like, 1,300 hours or 15 hundred hour on my CA. So just keep asking. I filled out this hour. I wanted to work on other stuff. I, I have a question for our panelists. Uh, what would you say are some of the more difficult hurdles that you see at work? whether it's being on site in the office, and some of you have done some construction administration. So those are things that you learn uh, because we, we may teach you the licensing aspect of construction administration, uh, what Elizabeth Pippin teaches you, but what is in the real life aspect that you see are hurdles? And I'm just giving you an example. So if you find your own mistake, whatever the CA stuff you do, submittal or R5, if you know you screw up something, don't hide it and try to bury it. Go go talk to your boss first because the more you hide it, it will just get worse and later on it shows up and not gonna work. So if anything happens just and you can't solve it, go ask. And then don't make same mistake many, many times. Just I personally like to write sticky notes and have my own checklist. If I mess, it wa mess up one time, try not to do a second time. So write it down. And then, as I mentioned on presentation, when you're at the job site and they, they might ask you a question and then the owner might directly co contact you and say, hey, can you please work on the color and, and sketches? Talk to your boss because you can't really answer that question. That's another service. So you need to talk to your boss before you do any action. Can I tell you a story? Just like happened a few months ago. Um, for the real life, so I mean, we have to deal with some games, you know, for grown ups. So it's for, for professional. But like at school, we just deal with. Um, 
you know, exams or presentation. Um, so sometimes um, for different consultant, they want to play game to earn money, you know. So when you do the CA construction administration, so it's very like different than what we learned from the school. So um, uh, uh, for like the GC for Gorm Ramsey, so he tried to push their product and earn some money from their body. So um, they just like make you send you a lot of like make you BC RFIs and that which is very in stupid. So they can just find it like by themselves, but like, and then they would feel like they would make you feel, oh, this product is very difficult to find, and uh, when well, we have some resources, how about like using them and blah 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 and get some money because like they all connected and, but like, you have to like get ahead of the game and then say, ah, oh, no, unless you send us physical sample and then like we will notify the client, you will get the extra credit from that because they specifying come specifying something cheaper. So that's the kind of like the game you have to like deal with. So it's kind of like different from like what you've learned. So that's my opinion, kind of like story. But like um, try to, yeah, she's right. Like we need to talk to the boss first. So don't, cause she or she, he will just cover your mess. Like even you make mistakes. So I was just, I don't want to put myself into the hot water. So that's, uh, I think that's uh, the best way you can learn. And also, yeah, that's it. For the submittal, like sometimes they will actually send you like really product discontinued. So like on the s when you answer the submittal, they will send you like request for substitution form, and then you will look up the product for whatever they want to replace with something, and make sure the spec is right because sometimes you will find something different. Like, be for example, in residential, we have they ask us to substitute the gas gas range and then when I looked up the BTU is different then now I have to contact um, MEP engineers and make sure is this okay is this gonna work in the building or not then those email back and forth all the time because you need to double check and then go into the drawing and really look for it otherwise you can't you can't really send back the RFI oh this looks okay then it's gonna be trouble I think several of you mentioned um, mentor-mentee relationship, and I assume all of you have at least one or are starting to just um, build that relationship. And I think um, if you could um, introduce who your mentor or mentors are and tell us um, examples of how the kinds of things that you do with them or the kinds of conversations that you have or the kinds of um, instances when you went to them for trouble, whether it was project related or because, or whether it was something that was more, um, you're, you know, you're planning your longer term career goals and you wanted a, a second, you know, advice from a more seasoned professional. So if you could kind of cover the kinds of, um, uh, 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 the way that they are resources to you in your career development. I'll be just honest with my boss because I can't really lie or hide anything. I'm not good at it. So if I don't know, I'll just go up to her and ask things. And then as a career, I just, when I was an intern and I, a couple months later, I kept working with her and just told her, I want to be full time after I graduate. I kept saying that for like almost two years. And then finally I was full time. So that was my story <laughs> <laughs> after graduation. I was like, can I be full time? Can I be full time? Almost like every single day, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I annoyed my boss, but. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, was um, the mentors are actually my boss. We have a very good relationship, as well as uh, someone back home uh, is also an architect. And um, it's just nice to talk to someone that, that is maybe very familiar with your situation, uh, also knows you a little bit. Um, for example, with my with my boss, uh, just talking about future projects or uh, about your own future goals and see how you can attack attack them and how he does it uh, or how he did it when he was younger. And I meant I saw very fast that we had very uh, similar situations, uh, except uh, when he went to school, he had a kid and I didn't. Uh, but for the rest, it was 
you know, there's some common ground. Uh, and I think it's very important if you're looking for a mentor that you have something similar uh, or something that interests you both. Uh, and just be open to them, talk to them. They will give you a lot of feedback. Uh, and especially if you want to search for jobs or uh, get licensed or uh, talk to them who how they did it and uh, what their support was. And maybe you can learn from them and maybe they can reach out for you and help you in that as well. Started three days ago, I don't know. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, but there's, um, my boss is out of the office all the time, but there's uh, like the second, like like the the right hand, like her right hand. She's kind of like a studio manager or something. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm not that active. And she always kind of go back to me and then check on me and something. But I think, yeah, I should be, I think you guys should be more like kind of active. Sometimes I have this problem and it's just like, eh, I'll do it later. But s I think every time you encounter like a, like a problem in just like, like a simple drawing, like um, some of the, I don't know, like ADA standard stuff, like you don't know that. So yeah, like. Just ask a lot of questions. Um, be more active, I think. Uh, I used to have uh, three, like four more mentors. Now I just stick with one um, because, like, the first one, uh, he just so busy. I mean, first suggestion, like, go to the PM, project managers first, not job captain, not boss or they're just too busy. Job captain, they're not even like, maybe not licensed. So I mean, PMs are the best choice for you to get a mentor and then like mentorship with. And um, the first one is just, he's just, he was too busy to talk with. And then like ev every time I had to like send emails for questions, I mean, that's not working for me. So I said, oh, okay, can I get another one? So um, the, the, other, so the, the lady is um, very good like, and I had, I'm still have a good relationship with her, and then like, but she got to take a leave for maternity, so that's a bummer. <laughs> and then uh, now I stick with this one. I she is very good, and she's licensed, and she taught me a lot of things. Um, so, uh, but normally I was uh, send out an invite uh, to set up a meeting like monthly or maybe um, two months, whenever like, and then so get prepared for the list of questions and maybe your future goals to go through with her. It doesn't matter like how long it, it takes, like he or she can handle that. So because you set up the meeting, so that means if you don't set up the meeting, it never happens, trust me. So, and then like you can go through everything you want and you can talk about like uh, your project or whenever you have and maybe some your your life. It's, it's okay to talk about that. So it doesn't have to be just like work related. So just based on my experience. Um, so my mentor is my boss. He's very nice. When I first got to the office, I was the only non-native person. So I was kind of shy and I don't know if I do it right culturally, should I do that, should I should not do that? So he actually called me in his, boss and uh, in his office and talked to me saying, um, you can spoke up, you can speak up because um, we won't judge you by that speak uh, freely and uh, just tell us your ideas, tell us your um, whatever in your mind. Uh, then he's very kind of encouraging person. Every time, so for last time when, we, when I was handling the submittal, I communicated with the uh, subcontractor, uh, subconsultant. They asked me, they are doing their legend, the Latin legend as their way. Our legend in architectural is another way. So I communicate with them saying, this is not, not matching, it's not consistent, probably should change. Then the consultant is saying, probably you should change. <laughs> then I said, okay, I will talk to you later. Then I talked to my boss, and my boss said, for the project management, you have to be very decisive, be, stand on your foot, and be <laughs> put, up, put down your foot saying, you have to do this, because we hire them, not the other way around. And he always gave me 
advice about managing like how to approach to people, how to check in on people. Don't just give them tasks directly. Check on them first. Be nice saying, oh, how's your day? And so today we, our goal is this, this, and communicate that. And he teach me how to do a list, and I actually mon monitoring the jobs, every project. So right now, I actually start to initiate the tasks for each um, project. So in that way, he trusts me more than when he leaves the office, he will communicate what's the goal for each project on this week because he travels a, a lot because we have projects in Montana. That's why he always not in the office. I have to be responsible for checking all the progress. Um, so I'm really grateful about my boss. He's really, really, really responsible, uh, <laughs> very um, great for my career, I think. And so talk about mentorship. Actually, a few months ago, I went to an event. It's about a mentorship event. So there's a, uh, it's uh, basically in uh, San Francisco. So they have all the group of um, architects. They were in a different process. And some are 10 years uh, experience, some are 20 years, some are even more. And so it's because it's basically in San Francisco, so everybody can join that. So in that way, you can know more people. So I think in some way, because sometimes you might, if your mentor is your boss, or sometimes you have some question you are not feel comfortable to ask, so you can ask people from outside the office. So I think they might also like solve your problem and also helpful. Uh, for now, <laughs> I don't remember, but I can send, yes. I have one thing to add on about mentor. So my boss is a super busy person. She's always like running around, going to the meeting, and going to school for AAUs. And sometimes I don't get to see her, and whenever I find chance, I try to talk to her. So like the, the favorite time is when we go to OEC meeting or before the presentation to the community meeting. I get to sit in Uber with her for like 10, 20 minutes. I get to ask question about like, hey, I'm studying for ARE and I don't know about um, what is DMP. Like, I don't get it. Guarantee maximum flight price. Can you explain to me? I just saw this in yesterday's lecture and I get to ask question. Or sometimes I get to talk about how I'm doing my work and to talk to her about like, is am I doing okay or like like what part I should improve? Like find time and try to talk to your mentor, like other than like their crazy busy time, and to see like how you can improve. I think that would be great things to share with mentor. So, so Karen had a brainstorm of a question. Uh, what are some parting thoughts that you want to share with everyone? Parting thoughts with our audience. In closing. Yeah. Even you finish school, you still have to study. <laughs> I think the one thing is you know more than you actually think you know. Um, I'm now, uh, because I might leave soon, so I'm now teaching another student, and he was very, um, he wasn't comfortable enough of, am I doing it right or wrong? And, you know, school teaches you a lot. Um, you have the basics, maybe, and even more, uh, and that's plenty for, you know, doing an internship. So, do an internship, don't be shy, because you know a lot already. Yeah, do internships, um, really helps you to get hired. And um, don't be picky, um, just even though you don't like the firm or anything, just go to the interview, you might like it, you might learn something. It can be your kind of like mock interview before your like uh, future uh, jobs that you want, and yeah. 
So for me, I think is always keep your passion. So don't forget what you feel, and when you're in the school, and keep that, and it will help, and people will see it. Um, for me, I think you have to be in initiative to find the job. Don't wait for the job to get to you. Don't play your phone when you da don't have a task. That's a really bad image. <laughs> uh, I think I didn't come up with some like good statement, but uh, I can use uh, a sentence from my former studio head. Like he told me, um, keep practicing until you hate it, then keep doing it until you get used to it, then keep practicing until you like it. Because like at the very at the very beginning, I hate I hate it like my job, and so like ah, I should be doing high rises, uh, blah blah blah. But like I end up with doing like fashion and hotels. But like okay, it's fine. I'm I'm liking it. So yeah, that's it. I want to thank all of our presenters, Irina, Maurice, Dennis. Luna, Agnes, Derek, it's impressive what you bring to all of us. And I think that this is a great audience to be learning from all of you. And Karen and I are very pleased that um, you have so much presence now amongst your classmates here. And our director is very proud. Uh, if Jennifer was here, she would say the same thing as Mark. So I think we're very happy. appreciate you coming. I appreciate that <laughs> Karen and, and Yim set this up. Um, and we actually get you guys in touch with the school and keep you in touch and also get you guys in touch with the alumni. I think it's really great to see how you how you actually transformed. Because <laughs> you might not realize it, but we're realizing it. Um, and I think we, we sometimes um, unconvenient when we ask pointed questions or we when we give you harsh critique at times. <laughs> But I hope it, it prepared you for what's out there because it's it's not easy, but it's it's also a lot of fun, a lot of type two fun, I guess. Thank you all for for making the effort and coming. Also the audience, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.